2005, with my friend Craig Ferreira, I put together an expedition to conduct a shark search in the Adriatic. We hoped to encounter great white sharks. We knew we would find blue sharks, and there were many other possible species. Two teams of eight volunteers, a film crew, two chartered vessels, and three weeks to find our sharks. The expedition helped secure protection for the great white shark in Croatian waters. A powerful conservation film was made and shown across Europe, and a paper was published on blue shark abundance. We had ticked a lot of our boxes. In the central Adriatic, large blue sharks are still often encountered. This female was a three meter shark bearing fresh mating scarring. When we caught her, the male joined her and stayed with her until we released her. We had proof positive of when blue sharks mate in the Adriatic. This data would prove valuable when coupled with the findings of our later 2009 expedition. The third SCS expedition to the Adriatic had two aims. The first was to return to the Yabuka Viz area hoping to encounter a great white shark and get the first free swimming footage and photos in the Mediterranean. The second aim was to investigate a suspected blue shark pupping ground for Alan Soldo, our local scientific advisor. We needed an early start to load over a ton of sardines, provisions for six days at sea and all the rest of our equipment. This was the third time I had steamed out of Jazeera, heading for Yabuka, hoping to meet a great white shark. Jackie, Andy and Sanya are old hands at SCS expeditions. Newcomers Ken and Karen soon found out this was not a holiday, as everybody worked hard preparing chum and equipment and stowing our kit. With the chum bags and the bait tubes in the water, the waiting game began. As the light faded, we worked out our rotor and plan of action for the night. The hours of darkness are when most of the activity occurs, and we will work through the night in pairs doing two-hour shifts. This night was no different, with several blue sharks being caught, recorded and released. We stopped chumming at dawn and steamed south towards Viz, where exactly a year ago a spear fisherman had been attacked by a great white shark. The identity of the attacker had been confirmed by a tooth fragment in the wound. Despite the settled conditions on the way to Viz, our radio warned that the weather would soon worsen with an increasing sea state and storm force winds. We managed several hours of intensive chumming in the area of last year's attack. The weather predictions then proved accurate, forcing us to up anchor and move back towards the mainland and the area where we hoped to find our blue shark nursery. Lying in the shelter of the Kornati Islands, we took our bearings, worked out our rotor for the night and settled in for the now familiar wait. Almost as soon as darkness arrived, so did our baby sharks. Many people are fans of the big sharks. Having spent a night in the company of baby blue sharks, I can say they gave me as much fun and pleasure as any sharks ever have. They were perfect little miniatures, cheeky, sneaky and very beautiful. They tried all sorts of manoeuvres to get their teeth into the chum bags before we could move them away. We had them with us all night, and the rotors were forgotten and nobody went to sleep. We had proved Alan Soldo's pupping ground. He will now use the data gathered to try to get the area closed to all fishing 
to protect the young sharks before they mature and move on. Blue sharks in Croatian waters enjoy a large degree of protection, but once outside the area, they face the same overfishing pressures that sharks do all over the world. During our week at sea, the weather had gone from summer to winter. Steaming back into Jazeera, seven cold and tired volunteers felt that something important had been achieved. And smelling like weapons of mass destruction and being utterly worn out just didn't matter. <laughs> 